Well, right now I can tell you without doubt that it is an extreme pleasure to welcome this next person on the radio show. I don't think in the years that I've known him, in the years that I've tried golf courses with both he and Don Martin, uh, that I, I don't think in all those years I've had Paul on the radio. Paul, good morning and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you, too. Good to hear your voice. It's good to hear your voice, uh, your voice, Paul. And uh, you know, I've been following the story of uh, of your accordion museum when you first opened it up, uh, and then, of course, now uh, you've moved into the Canaan Union Station. Uh, but you also have a book that has come out, and that is Accordion Stories from the Heart. Uh, and uh, as your title says a collection of accordions from around the world and their stories inspired by the extraordinary people who played them. Okay, question number one, Paul. All the times I golfed with you, I don't think I ever knew you played uh, the accordion, uh, and uh, and I didn't know about uh, your knowledge of accordions until you actually opened up the first museum. Uh, When did you uh, get hooked on the accordion? Well, it's a long story, (laughs) but the very short of it was... um, I was played when I was uh, 10 years old out on Long Island where I grew up. My Italian family, my mother came to me one day and said, we want you to learn how to play the accordion. And I said to her, and I remember this vividly, (laughs) I said, Mom, anything but that, anything but that. Um, And I played from 10 to 17, got into competitions and accordion bands. It was big back then, but it was fading. And uh, when I got to be... 17, 18, I was going to Fairfield University, and that thing went in the closet. That was the end of it, I thought, until 2008, when I um, I came across it again in a very unusual way, just woke up one morning and wanted to play again. And uh, I happened to find uh, accordions in a guy's renovated garage back in 2008, in the middle of Vermont, of all places. And uh, he had a hundred of them there, and I was going to buy one. But on the floor were a bunch of little concertinas, uh, little handheld, uh, maybe a dozen of them, units, uh, brown, rusty, parts falling off of them. And I said to him, what are these doing on the floor here? And he said, oh, very serious collector came in with them, got the paperwork, and he said, those came from the Nazi prison camps. And I just couldn't un- understand that. And, you know, playing an accordion as a kid, what's that got to do with what? Prison camps? Um, and sure enough, I did some research and I started looking and found out that's what happened. They, they let them keep their accordions and violins when they were taken into the prison camps. And... Um, the guards wanted music, and they wanted to make movie real, show the world how um, everything was fine. And that's when I started getting interested in the backstory from the accordions, who played them, where, and boy, that's where the book came from. All a lot of the stories I found um, went into that book, and of course, it got bigger and bigger. Uh, more and more accordions were coming, and here we are. And you have you have uh, your your mother Carmela to thank for this. Uh, yes, uh, she's my mother. I thought she was punishing me back when I was ten, twelve, <laughs> and she said, "No, no, no." Uh, she said, "It's good, it's clean, and it's wholesome." Uh, she was very worried, you know, back out on Long Island, back in those even then, uh, drugs, um, gangs, things that were going on. Uh, she wanted to get me into something that was, uh, I guess, safe. And she did. But I took a lot of abuse for it. But I, <laughs> here we are, I think, benefiting from it and um, extending the benefit to people that come into our uh, museum. It, it's amazing. Now, it's the, amazing. the museum, once again, is located at the Canaan Union Station. Uh, before we move on, how many accordions do you have and how many accordions <laughs> are on display? Because I'm pretty sure, it's like the Sharon Historical Society, which I never really thought about, what they have on display is only at, at the Sharon Historical Society a fraction of what they have, and they finally hired a curator yeah. so they can rotate and get everything out over the course of maybe two years and rotate their displays. So there's got to be a discrepancy how many you have on display and how many you have. Well... We have on display 
um, are approaching 500. Wow. So we got two good-sized rooms in the station. In the first room, the main room, is mostly antique. Um, they're all for sale. You know, people want to keep them in their homes, some people. And in the second room, we have um, at least 100 of them that are for sale. They operate well. Um, so they're there. You can see them all. It's, it's actually too much. Um, you know, people get overwhelmed with the uh, quantity, but uh, they're there. Are you are you constantly on the search for historic accordions? Well, they're on the search for me. Okay. Uh, in a way, we have an orphanage for accordions going on there. Um, I find them on the deck when I come in in the morning. People just drop them off. Um, they don't want to throw them away. And Tilly played them. Uncle Frank paid, played this one, and they are afraid to throw them away. So they give them to us, and we find them. But, yes, I, I'm always looking for unusual units. And it's things people haven't seen, uh, even me. Um, and uh, well, we're always looking and ready to accept donations. Now, what's interesting about, oh, by the way, we're speaking with Paul Ramuni at the New England Accordion Connection a Museum <laughs> Company, uh, which is located at the Canyon Union Station. Uh, and along with displaying uh, the, 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 these uh, and also selling these accordions, um, the, your business is, uh, is, is a lot bigger than that because you also uh, offer lessons. You also uh, repair <laughs> for people that want their accordion repaired. Uh, you do have parts and accessories, uh, and uh, I think I think it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, that you're there as a service for for people because you're right. There's you know when I was growing up and I learned to play saxophone and then I gave that up because it was too heavy and I didn't like the taste of the reed, and I then took up I took up guitar. My mother was the same as you. She wanted me to take up a musical instrument. My my brothers and sisters all were athletic. I wasn't. And she said, "You're not just going to sit around the house." So, so, so I, so now, for people out there, are, are, do, do you do you give lessons? Are, are people coming to you for lessons? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm being surprised by the the reception. We've sold over um, 27 of them since I moved in there in July. Uh, we even had a bulk sale uh, going of all places to uh, South America. Um, where they'll, they're going crazy looking for accordions in South America. But we service them, we sell them, we repair them where possible. Uh, and it's a store, actually, but it has an awfully large um, selection of older accordions. I had a guy come in, and he just wanted an old accordion in his living room. And he spent $2,000 on this thing. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, the, the reaction of the folks um, is just amazing. They're all shocked, and they're tickled pink. People are laughing. It's a happy place to come and either get involved by buying one. Uh, they start somewhere around $500 and, and work their way up uh, to maybe 2000 All mainly used equipment. We can get new, but with the supply chain problems today, getting new accordion, getting new anything is, uh, takes a long time. And, and so, you, you, you you also have a traveling museum that you go you go places with accordions and 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 do displays and stuff. Anyway. Yes, we were doing a lot of that in 2019 up till then, and then the COVID hit, and that was it. We, you know, nursing homes, historical societies, any place, libraries, just stopped uh, admitting people in, in in bulk numbers like that. So. Um, we put it in the railroad station and then ask people to come visit us. And actually it works better because you get the full flavor of all the accordion, the beauty, the craftsmanship. Um, the experience is really much better. But we will go and play for people, at, uh, you know, mainly groups of small groups of people. Uh, so. How does it feel to be back home in the, in the railroad station? <laughs> it, it, Marshall, it's, that's another whole story, yeah. and uh, it's amazing how things come full circle sometimes in our lives, and uh, it feels great, um, and, a, and a much better <laughs> reception. Uh, we, we did tax returns for 40 years, and it wasn't exactly uh, what people were anxious to see. <laughs> uh, do. 
so now it's just the opposite. They're coming in, and when they come through the door, they become like little kids. And they go, look at this. Oh, my gosh. And next thing you know, we're friends, and I still don't know their name. And uh, it's a great feeling. It's, oh. uh, well, yeah. and once again, the New England Accordion Connection and Museum a Company, which is located uh, right there at the Canaan Union Station uh, in the center of Canaan. Uh, I do believe your telephone number is 860-833-1374. That's it. That's it. And, of course, you are on the web at neacmc.com. That's neacmc.com. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Paul, uh, it's, it's a joy listening to you. I can actually hear in your voice the joy, almost like when you used to beat Don Martin in golf. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> now, where's the, where is the book available, Accordion Stories for the Heart? Well, it's on Amazon, but we, um, we sell it at a discounted uh, amount down at our station place in the railroad station. So we have them, or you can go online and get it on Amazon, uh, readily available. And what's what's great about it, uh, not only is it about accordions, which you're right, it's about people. Yeah, yeah. That's very important. The backstories are just phenomenal. You, you, you sit there and read them, and you think uh, somebody made this up, and, and they're not. They're actual stories of people took their accordions with them into war zones, uh, Hospitals, you you name it. The portability factor made a big, big difference. And uh, when you strap one of those things on, it's not for you to, to enjoy necessarily. It makes too much noise. So you, you're going to play for other people, and they really love the, the sound, and it's a happy sound. So uh, it's it's an important it's an important part of our American history. Um, so I'm I'm glad to be able to bring that to people and uh, let them enjoy it. Paul, it's been a real joy uh, speaking to you uh, again here. And uh, uh, I want to wish you and your family uh, a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas. And uh, what I'll do, once once my, both my knees are probably about the springtime, uh, back to a, a little normal, uh, I'll, I'll saunter over there and maybe you can uh, teach me a few licks on one of those accordions. Yeah, you might even... Uh, Play, uh, dance to a polka. How does that? I don't know, but if, but if I like it enough and I start playing it, I know my neighbors will probably be upset. <laughs> you might be surprised. All right, Marshall, that's great. Thank well, you very much. All right, Paul, have have a have a great holiday season. You too. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Angelo Paul Ramuni. I know him as Paul, uh, and uh, what a great museum he's got right there in the Canaan Union Station.